All right. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome. It's Pete here from FigLife.com, and today I'm going to talk about rooting. Uh, it's uh, I've been spending the last three, four, maybe even five weeks uh, packaging up my fig trees, selling them, getting them shipped off, and now I'm transitioning over into uh, rooting. And uh, I'm going to be rooting a bunch of fig trees this winter, and then I'm going to be selling them in the spring. So. Um, it's rooting season here for me in Northern Virginia, and I just thought I'd do a little video here about my rooting process because um, I have had a few people ask me about rooting, so I figured, you know, might as well put together a little uh, a little video about rooting. And, uh, you know, nothing I'm going to say here really is, is anything uh, new or earth-shattering. Um, you know, there's tons and tons of different processes for rooting. Um, there's probably many, many videos about rooting from many different people. Um, so this is not like, a, this is not some special technique that I have. It's really just, it's really just me trying to implement, uh, some of the best practices, uh, not just that I've learned, but also that I've, that I've, uh, taken from others, uh, in order to, to do my rooting. And <clears throat> part of it is about trying to get a good success rate, but then also part of it for me is about just just having a process that is uh, somewhat easy to do, uh, somewhat low maintenance, and um, you know that that's that's a factor for me as well. So uh, so I use the direct plant method. I I plant my my cuttings in these four by four by nine tree pots. Uh, it's very similar to the process that Harvey talks about in his in his video, um, and I did watch his video. Uh, just before maybe a couple days ago to uh, to just just see what he said about rooting um, but there were there were a few additional things that I thought were important that Harvey didn't cover so um, so you know I decided to go ahead and do this this video here so uh, yeah direct direct potting method um, I got these uh, these tree pots here these are the Stu and Sons tree pots uh, TP 49 is a specific model number for this tree pot and uh, what I do is, uh, you know, I've got the, I've got the cuttings. So uh, here's some cuttings here, and uh, let me grab a couple here. Try to find one that has a good. Uh, here we go. All right. So I've got one here. This is a Rossellino cutting, and uh, the first thing, uh, one of the one of the first things you want to do is uh, when you're trying to root a cutting, is you got to make sure you know which side is up. So uh, there is an up and there is a down. You can't just like flip it around whichever way you want. That's not going to work. Uh, so what you want to do is you look and you've got the, uh, I think this is called the leaf scar here, uh, but it looks like a mouth of sorts. And sometimes it'll look like a smile. Sometimes it's just more of like an oval. And so it doesn't really have a, a smile or a frown to it. Um, but you got the, we'll call it the mouth. You got the mouth here. And then right above it, you got a couple nodes, or it could be below, right? Like it's below now, right? But it should be above, <laughs> you know? The uh, the mouth should be on the bottom, and then you got the, the kind of two bumps up here. Uh, that should be on the top. So you can think of it as like a mouth and a couple eyes, or a mouth and like a, a nose or something, I don't know. But the point is, the mouth should be on the bottom. And so that, uh, that helps you determine which side is up and which side is down. So... Uh, so now that we've figured out which side is, uh, which side is up and which side is down, uh, that's, that's, uh, probably step number one. Uh, what I want, what you want to do next is, uh, you want to, well, you're going to do two different things. You're going to do, you're going to do something special to the top and then you do something special to the bottom. So to the top, what I do is I take some, uh, some, some, uh, you know, people use parafilm. Uh, I, I actually am not using parafilm. I'm, I'm using something called buddy tape, but it's very similar to parafilm. Uh, most people use parafilm. Parafilm is much easier to find. It's a little cheaper. Uh, this stuff, uh, a little harder, you know, the opposite of that, a little harder to find, a little more expensive. But um, I actually, I used parafilm for a couple years and um, it's good. It's absolutely good. Uh, but uh, I tried to use the buddy tape last year and I, I did like it a little bit better. So I'm continuing to use this year. Uh, so I use the buddy tape, but buddy tape, parafilm, whatever. So what you're gonna do is uh, you're just gonna wrap the top of the cutting. And what you wanna do is just do a single uh, layer. You don't wanna do like double layers or something like that. 
So you just kind of wrap it up all the way to the top. There we go. So there, I wrapped up the cutting and uh, now the top is covered. And then uh, what you're gonna do on the bottom is you're gonna make a fresh cut. So I, I do not typically make a fresh cut on the top unless there's some kind of rot or something going on there, which hopefully there's not. Uh, but I, I make a fresh cut on the bottom. There you go. Uh, and uh, well, actually I should mention, so where you make the cut is, is important because what you wanna do is you wanna leave maybe like a half an inch or so. I mean, you know, just approximate, but about a half an inch uh, up of, above, a, above a node. So you, you take a node and then you go about, you know, a half an inch to three quarters of an inch, something like that, and do the cut. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna scrape. Uh, so let me show it. You just kind of scrape along the node there and make a fresh cut along the node. And I do another one on the back side too. So I do, you know, 180 degrees out, uh, two scrapes on the uh, on the bottom of the cutting. What this does, it, it, uh, it creates a, an area where, where roots are gonna grow out of this where the scrape is, and they're particularly likely to grow out of uh, a node area. So that's why you wanna scrape that node. And, um, you know, some people will say, well, you know, they don't, they don't, I've heard people say that they don't actually grow along those scrapes, that the roots don't, and you shouldn't do the scrapes. And I think that that is actually wrong um, because many times I've pulled out cuttings that, that just like ended up not, not, not working out for some reason or whatever. And, uh, a lot of roots coming out of those scrapes, um, on, on a frequent basis, I'll see that a lot of roots coming out of the scrapes. So I do believe in scraping the node, uh, scraping the bottom there, especially along the node. And, um, you want to make sure you don't go too deep, but I've heard some people say, oh, you just want to expose the green. And I, I think, I think you actually know, need to go a little bit deeper than that. Uh, <laughs> but don't go too deep. Um, trying to go too deep on that. So just kind of, uh, just scrape that, scrape that bottom up a little bit. And then the fresh cut uh, there, like I mentioned. So now we've got the bottom cut up. We got the top wrapped up. <clears throat> so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a, a root growth hormone here. Uh, this, is, this is called dip and grow. I use the liquid. <clears throat> a lot of people also use Clonex, uh, like a Clonex, I think they make a gel. And um, I've heard a lot of good things about Clonex. People, a lot of people use it, and um, I'm sure it's great. Um, but Dip and Grow is also supposed to be pretty good, and I just I use that because I've used it and I like it. So I use Dip and Grow, but I do make sure to use the liquid and not the powder. I don't like the powder. Um, the powder. Uh, many people have said that the powder um, tends to lead to more rot. Um, so I don't do the powder. So I just put that in there. I think uh, three to five seconds is what the instructions say to do. So there we go. I dipped it in the dip and grow. Okay, so now it's ready to go into the pot. So I got my potting soil here, uh, which I'll describe here in just a second, but let me go ahead and put this in the soil. So I filled it up maybe like halfway with soil. And um, just like Harvey talks about in his video, you know, you don't want to shove the, the you don't want to shove, I mean, it sounds crazy to me. <laughs> so I've been doing this for a while, but uh, you don't want to shove the, the cutting all the way down in the bottom, right? You wouldn't want to do that. So you just kind of want to kind of keep it in the top half of the pot. Um, and usually my cuttings aren't big enough where I'm going to go all the way to the bottom anyway. But, but even if they were, um, like this one's pretty big right here. Um, you don't want to shove it all the way down because what will happen is the water will tend to like, like concentrate more on the bottom and, and and it's okay to have the roots grow down to that water, that heavy watered area, but you don't want the cutting sitting in that. So it's better to have the cutting in the top half of the pot. So I filled this about halfway and I'm just gonna kind of like set it there and I'll just kind of fill in the rest of the soil around it. Uh, just cause um, I like to, I like kind of do it that way instead of filling it all the way up with uh, with potting soil and then like trying to shove the the cutting down in because you compact what do you do then is you compact that soil down in there around the cutting and I, I like to keep the soil kind of loose so uh, this is a uh, Rosalino so uh, I need to label this but I seem to have lost my uh, I seem to have lost my marker 
And so I'll label this here in just a second, but, um, but labeling is important. So anyway, <laughs> I, don't know where my, I don't know where my marker went. Anyway, um, so, so going back to the potting soil, I do want to talk about the potting soil. Uh, so I use uh, ProMix BX. Um, you know, I've, I've done different things over the years. Uh, I used to make my own potting soil, actually, for the, the rooting. Um, I would use peat moss and some perlite, and, um, you know, I'd make my own stuff. I even had, like, uh, like mycorrhiza, uh, like, like, fungus stuff that I would that I would add into the potting soil. And um, ultimately I ended up deciding that that was a lot of work and, um, and the Promix, uh, it kind of does it all for you. So, so I use Promix BX. A lot of people use Promix HP. Um, I've heard good things about Promix HP. Uh, I decided to use Promix BX. I used it all last year and I and, uh, was happy with it. But I, I decided to use it because um, uh, Threefold Farm did a, they have a, a, a web page where they talk about some experiments they've done with rooting and over years they tried they tried uh, a set of cuttings with Promix HP and they tried a set of cuttings with Promix BX. They had a little bit better results with Promix BX, but they were both good. Um, so I just ended up deciding to go with Promix BX, but honestly, I, I don't think it, I don't think it really matters that much. Um, I think either one is pretty good. So that's what I use is the Promix BX. Um, I've been really happy with it. Uh, Another thing I'll mention with the, the potting mix is you want to pre-moisten it before you put it in the pot. So what I do is I'll, I'll get the potting mix out of the bags. This is my uh, one of my Promix BX bags right here. And it's going to be pretty dry when I put it in my in my uh, container that I mix it in. So, so it goes in here and then what I do is I pour some water in. And, uh, and you can use approximate ratio is uh, typically like five parts dry mix to one part water uh, by volume. Um, that'll that'll work or um, what I use is what I use now instead of doing the volume measurement method is uh, excuse me I just kind of use the feel method so what I do is I, I just get it wet enough where you can take it and you can squeeze it you know you squeeze it come closer here you squeeze it and uh, it'll kind of clump up like that right and uh, and when you're done there'll be some moisture left on your hand There'll be some moisture left on your hand, uh, but what won't happen is when you squeeze it, you won't have water dripping out. If you have water dripping out, then it's a little, it's too much water. You need to add some more dry mix in to dry it out a little bit more. So um, that's that's kind of gets you the perfect moisture level when you're starting the rooting. Honestly, for the for the direct pot method like this, I don't feel like that perfect moisture level is super important. I think um, I think if you're doing like uh, the fig pops which I've done, I've done that method as well in the past. When you're doing that method where you're, you're locking in that moisture for an extended period of time inside of that enclosed container, inside of that bag, where there's no, there's not gonna be any evaporation and there's not gonna be any, you're not gonna be really having a chance to add more in or anything like that. You're locking it in. In that case, I, I feel like it really is pretty critical to get the right amount of moisture in there um, at the very start. For this direct pot method, I don't feel like it's really as critical because, uh, you know, it could be the perfect moisture level here right now. Uh, but what's going to happen is it's going to evaporate, right? <laughs> and then I'm going to add more water in. So, so, you know, just, just get it close for the direct pot method. Just get it pretty close. And, um, and that'll be good enough, I think. Uh, and I'll talk some more about, uh, moisture levels in a second when I, when I go down to the grow room, but, uh, but yeah, you just gotta label this thing, um, and then um, and then it's all set. So uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to mention. Oh yeah, so um, some people when they're when they're putting this in here, some people will wrap the cutting and parafilm down below the soil line. Uh, I know Harvey in particular talks about that that he wraps it down below the soil line a couple maybe an inch or two below the soil line. I typically try not to do that. I typically actually try to have the parafilm um you know go down to the soil line but not go below the soil line and the reason is that uh a lot of times i'll see rot occur uh, or start to occur down below that soil line and I end up having to like go in later and like try to scrape it out um <clears throat> hopefully if it uh, if it was successful so so i just t i just tend to try to try to bring it down uh, wrap it such that it goes to the soil line but not actually below the soil line 
And uh, yes, that's another that's another tip. But you know, there's different opinions on that. So um, that's just my opinion. Uh, what else? I think that's about it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I got I got some more uh, got some more cuttings here. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up. And then uh, I'll go down to the grow room and I'll, I'll um, just talk about a couple more things down in the grow room. All right, so I'm down here in the grow room. I've uh, finished potting up. Well, I haven't actually finished potting up all the cuttings, but I brought some cuttings down here to the grow room. Um, and uh, so I just thought to talk about a few things down here. Uh, so, um, you know, important things to, uh, important things for once you've gotten them all potted up and you, you're just going to let them root. Uh, first of all, you do just want to kind of leave them alone, right? You don't want to be bothering them, um, checking, you know, you know, you do need to check them to make sure they have enough water. But, but other than that, um, there's not a lot really that you need to be doing to these things. Um, and you probably honestly be doing more harm than good by by continuing to mess with them so for the most part you just want to leave them alone um, but the most important thing probably uh for the rooting process is to have the right temperature in, um, for the cuttings so so there's different ways you can give them the right temperature uh, some people really like using heating pads because it heats up the roots more than it heats up the uh you know the top of the cutting and um you know then i, I guess that the the theory is that produce that produces more root growth first which which you do want really you, you do want roots um before you start growing the leaves so um so i guess that's good if you can get that to work but i don't like to do that i like to uh i don't like using the heating pads i just like to heat up the room to the right temperature uh, to the temperature that you want the cutting to be at, uh, to produce roots and then, and then grow leaves. And, uh, the reason I like to do that is because then you don't have to worry about, um, temperature gradients. You know, everything's at the same temperature. You don't have to worry, you know, when you have the temperature gradients going on with the heating pad, you can have, uh, you, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's just hard to control the temperature exactly right with the heating pads. Um, because some some parts of the plant then are going to be probably too hot and some parts are probably maybe going to be too cold so it's it's, it's in my opinion much easier just to heat the environment to the temperature that you want um to root the cutting and i know that's you know for, for that's not really an option for everybody um because uh well, well some people just don't have the the sort of setup to do that uh, but what I, what I do is I have this room here and I just heat it to the temperature that I want the cuttings to be at. And the exact temperature that I use is 78 degrees. Um, but I think, uh, I think probably 75 to 80 degrees, that band is probably, is probably pretty good, you know, anywhere in that band. Um, but 78 is the exact temperature that I use for, uh, for rooting. And, uh, a colder temperature is going to be bad because then the roots are not going to really uh, develop very quickly and and it is kind of a race against time when you're doing this rooting you know once you heat these things up it is kind of a race uh you know you want them to root um you want them to root before uh before they like rot or something right so there is a, a time aspect to this so um you don't want it to take too long so 75 above 75 is typically good for rooting but then if you get too hot then um i think uh you get like some nasties and stuff growing in the you can get stuff growing in there that you don't want so 75 to 80 seems like uh kind of like the magic uh the magic temperature the just the, the just right temperature uh for rooting these things um so other things um i don't i don't use the lights i've got i've got lights um in this grow setup here but i don't turn them on until i start seeing leaves and um the reason is that there's just really no reason to have lights on if they don't have leaves i mean they're they're not gonna be able to use the light uh some people there have been some theories that have been put out about how how uh you know if you have the lights that'll encourage leaf growth as opposed to root growth but i don't I, you know i haven't seen any real like definitive studies on that so um i think that's just kind of people's i, I think that's I, I think that's just an idea. I don't think that's a real thing. But but in any case, I don't I don't turn on the lights initially just because there's no point. There's no reason to have the lights on because the, the cuttings can't use the light. So I just leave it off. So I leave them in the dark, uh, but the temperature is important. So 78 degrees. 
And um, I do usually also give it a little bit of humidity in here. Um, even though they have the they have the parafilm or the buddy tape on there, which should protect, uh, you know, should minimize moisture loss from the cutting. Uh, uh, and that is important. Um, if I didn't have the buddy tape on there, those things would dry out probably before they, um, before they successfully root roots and leaves. Uh, so that's important. Um, but, uh, but even though I have the buddy tape on there, uh, which helps with moisture loss from the, from the cutting itself, I still do uh, usually provide a little bit of humidity here in this room because, um, because the, the, the house here is just really dry. So, um, so I'll, I'll do that, but, but you know, is that really necessary? I don't know, probably not. Um, but the really important thing really is, is the temperature. So the 78 degrees, that's, uh, or that, that band, you know, 75 to 80 degrees, that's pretty important. Uh, what else? Um, I guess, you know, one other thing I could mention is, is the watering. So, you know, in the direct plant method here, uh, you're gonna have some water loss, uh, you know, it's just gonna evaporate eventually, right? And so over time, it's not gonna happen super quick, but I wanna say maybe like after about a week, um, you, you know, I may need to start thinking about, thinking about water, watering these things. And as they grow roots, they're gonna start using more and more water, especially, uh, well, roots and leaves. So especially once they start growing leaves and if they have roots associated with those leaves, uh, then then it's going to start using this going to start using a lot more water, and um, and and you're going to have to stay on top of that, otherwise the plant's going to dry out. So, uh, and and um, so I'll get back to that in just a second. But I but I just remember one other thing I want to talk about. Um, so so how do you tell there's roots in this thing, right? Because it's a black pot. There's a yeah you can't see through it. Uh, some people like to use cups. But I just use black pots. And, um, but then the question is, well, how do you know if there's roots? Well, you're gonna know if there's roots because uh, you just kinda gotta, well, you just kinda gotta trust that the, the roots are gonna grow. Um, but then what's gonna happen is you're gonna get some leaves growing. It'll probably maybe take, uh, you know, three or four weeks and get some leaves growing. And what's gonna happen is if there's no roots, those leaves are gonna grow and they're gonna last maybe like uh, three days, maybe a week or so. And then they're gonna just shrivel up and die. And if that happens, then you probably either didn't have roots or you had some rot going on. And, um, and, and, uh, and so you essentially don't have any roots connected to the rest of the tree. So, so if the leaves grow and then they stay growing, then you have roots and you don't need to see the roots. You can just believe that they are there and uh, that will be sufficient. Now what you, what you would not want to do is actually as it's rooting like let's say two three weeks go by and you're like oh i just don't know does it have roots or does it not have roots and you pull the the cutting out of the pot like that would be that would be a crazy idea you would never ever do that never pull the cutting out of the pot uh to check for roots unless you've basically given up on the cutting that's the only time you will pull the 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 cutting out of the uh, of the the tree pot to check for roots is if you're basically just giving up on it so otherwise, do not pull it out. Um, you've got to just let it do its thing, let it grow the roots, and um, eventually, usually after about a month, you'll start to see some leaves, and um, and then it'll grow. And um, and typically, I'd see like maybe like eighty percent success rate with this method. Um, seems to be pretty good for me. I mean, there's always going to be a few uh, that don't make it, but um, yeah. So getting back to watering. Um, so what, I, so it's going to lose some water here eventually and, uh, and you're gonna have to water it. So what I, what I do in order to water these is I, is I, is I use weight and, um, as opposed to like, yeah, cause there's different ways you can do it, right? You can just add the same amount of water to every pot on like a time basis. So like every week I'm going to add so much water and then like eventually like every few days I'll add so much water and then every day I'll add so much water or whatever, right? There's like a time schedule that you use. You could you could do that, but in my opinion, that's not a great method. Um, there's also sort of the feel method, which is also a weight based method. Um, uh, well, that, that is a weight based method. You can just sort of feel it, like oh, you know, this feels pretty lightweight. Let me add some water. Um, you know, that's sort of like the the um, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, like I I do hundreds of these things, and still that method like is is kind of hit or miss for me. So what I do is I just use a scale, and I just weigh it. And, and, I have a, and I have a weight band that I use where if the cutting gets down to a certain weight, um, actually it's 450 grams. If it gets down to 450 grams, 
then um, I go ahead and add water. And I'll add the water up to a weight of about 550 grams, and then I'll stop. And so what that does is it prevents the cutting from getting too dry. Uh, that's the, the lower limit. Um, but then when I'm watering it, it prevents it prevents me from overwatering. Uh, that's that's the upper limit, the 550 gram limit. And uh, and it's pretty it's pretty fail safe. I mean, if you if you just do that, you, then you never underwater it and you never overwater it. And um, and uh, the only thing is, it's just kind of like you got to actually go through the effort of actually actually weighing the cutting, right? Which is uh, you know, it's a little bit of work, but it's not like it's not like a huge amount of work. So um, that's what I do. That's what I do. I just weigh it. And actually, so I just, I just did like this one here, uh, Zafiro. So let me, let me go ahead and weigh this one. All right. So I got my scale here. Let me just turn it on. And I get the initial weight here. Uh, yeah. So 523. Uh, so I, so again, I, I moistened it according to that method I showed you where I just squeeze it and uh and then that's where i get the initial amount of water from and it's showing 523 which is kind of high in the band um but it's in that band that i'm talking about the 450 to 550 gram weight band and um and that weight band will work for you know this this exact type of of uh setup right which is a four by four by nine tree pot with promix bx you know if you have a different size uh if you have a different uh, uh, potting mix, you know, that weight band might be different. So this is just, this is just from experience, uh, what I, what I use uh, in order to water my cuttings. And I'll use that pretty much um, for the first part of the rooting season. Um, later in the rooting season, I'll end up extending that band up a little higher um, so that I can so that I can go a little bit longer between waterings and I'll, I'll end up, what I'll end up doing is adding more water in there uh, because after a certain point, the cutting, uh, the tree is going to be less sensitive to overwatering because it's gonna have a strong root system. So right now it does not have a strong root system. In fact, it doesn't have any root system at all. So um, I wanna be real sensitive about overwatering. So I use that, that 450 to 550 gram weight band. Um, and that's, that's how I do watering. So, um, so it's pretty, uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's not effortless. It does require a little bit of work, but it, um, it prevents me from having water issues. And, uh, and, and, and other than just like maintaining at the right temperature, um, just having the sufficient amount of water is, is probably the only other real big key. Uh, and then you just have to wait. So. So that's my process for rooting. Um, once I see some leaves, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on these lights and then and then it'll just be, I'll be all set after that. Just keep keep watering it and, um, and they'll grow. So it's really not, I mean, there's not, <laughs> it's not really a lot to it, you know? I mean, I pretty much covered all the, uh, I think all the main points. I suppose there's some minor things maybe I didn't, I didn't hit, but, uh, I think I covered all the main stuff. So anyway, that's my, uh, that's my rooting process, uh, direct plant rooting process. Again, it's not, uh, it's not super unique. It's not really something I, uh, you know, a lot of other people are doing it. And here's the other thing too, you know, there's a lot of different rooting methods, you know, and I've used a bunch of different rooting methods, methods myself, uh, fig pops. I use those for a season. Um, I've tried other things. Uh, the, um, the uh the method where you put the the co the core in uh you lay the cuttings down in the core you know i've tried that um i've tried a bunch of different things but for me this is just the one i prefer um but it doesn't mean that the other ones are wrong it doesn't mean the other ones are bad it's just uh you know just whatever works for you so this is this is the method i use this is what works for me and uh this is this is the way that i prefer to do it so um hopefully uh Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was uh, it was it was uh, useful to some folks. And if it was, uh, please check out my website www.figlife.com. And I've also got a YouTube channel, so please subscribe to that if uh, if you'd like. And uh, thanks for watching.